Greetings, adventurers, and welcome back to the Den of the Drake. Other dragons hoard gold while I hoard internet cringe. Ah, 4chan, a website that can figure out the precise location of Shia LaBeouf using live footage of the stars but somehow can't figure out how women work. Yes, dear listener, the hacker known as 4chan certainly has a long and storied history filled with mystique, drama, and lots of other stuff I can't even say without getting my channel deleted. Meanwhile, Sniper Wolf can literally dock someone's home address and get less than a slap on the wrist. But we're not gonna talk about that, now are we, YouTube? Ahem, 4chan. While there are certainly a lot of weird happenings going on in that particular corner of the internet, 4chan is not without its perks. You see, dear listener, like every horrific hellscape hostile to human sanity and left untouched by the light of God, there is treasure to be found if you're brave enough to go look for it. Yes, some of my favorite stories from the internet have their roots firmly sprouting from 4chan. Which checks out, honestly. The strongest plants need a good fertilizer, and brother, that's one big pile of sh**. The story I have for you today stars a clown named Bonzi, who takes on the eldritch horrors of Call of Cthulhu and passes into legend using the power of friendship, firearms, and weaponized depression. Now, without any further delay, let's go ahead and dive right into the legend of Bonzi the Sad Clown. Enjoy. This week's story is written by anonymous user Zagarath and is titled Bonzi the Sad Clown. I have a couple of stories floating around TG at this point, mostly about D&D with my amazing DM. But what people don't know about him is just how dark he can get. Take our Call of Cthulhu campaign. See, we got a little bit uppity and may have overstepped our bounds, which put the DM, or GM in this case, into maximum passive-aggressive mode. In three sessions, a group of four players lost no less than two dozen characters, and they all went out brutally. Some caught fire, some lost their minds, and some went rambling into the night. And more than a couple shot themselves after taking out an ally or semi-important NPC. Needless to say, we had lost a lot of hope for playing a full campaign with a single character. And then I created Bonzi the Sad Clown. Bonzi was my way of trying to apologize to the GM, a way to appease him if you will. After all, what better way to show heartbreak than with a symbol of joy and fun shattered into a broken and unloved shell. Bonzi dressed simply. He wore very little makeup, a small red nose, and had dark hair. And his clown uniform was covered with an old worn trench coat that was not nearly as badass as it implied. He had a slight drinking problem, but managed to maintain sobriety without withdrawal, and never seemed to crack a smile. He met the other players by chance, having missed his bus and decided to bum it in the town for a few days because, hell, it's not like he really had anywhere else to be after all. The first character to find me thought I was a traveling clown and tried to strike up a chat about his chosen career. Hi, Bonzi. Know any good jokes? Uh, why did little Susie fall off the swing? Uh, I don't know. Why? Because little Susie lost her arms to cancer years ago. Bonzi sighed, slowly reached up, and honked his nose. The table was dead quiet, save for the player I just spoke to. He wore a priceless expression of, Sweet God, you're serious, and quietly giggled. Do, uh, do you know any others? Uh, knock, knock. Uh, who's there? Not Susie. Honk. The game proceeded rather organically from there, with the occasional interjection from Bonzi on why the town was f***ed up and we should leave. When they encountered a librarian who just so happened to be the local cult leader, Bonzi was the first to know. After all, who else would know when someone was faking anything? The trap set was simple, but if anyone here has played Call of Cthulhu, then you know that simple doesn't mean jack. We entered the library, two of us moving to the roof, the third sneaking behind the building. Leading the charge? The only one who didn't care what happened. Bonzi. The sad clown ever so quietly knocked on the door, watching the librarian fish for his keys as rain gently drizzled in the night outside the windows. Bonzi entered took off his coat, and draped it over his arm with only a few words of greeting. As we talked, our third guy suddenly found himself at the business end of a shotgun, 
and as if he was a machine, pulled out another character sheet and started generating a new character. The other two were just as unlucky, knocked down and grappled by other cultists who were also on the stairwell. Everyone was already pulling out sheets, muttering how they made a mistake, and they were going to do better next time. But they forgot Bonzi. After all, nobody cares about Bonzi. The librarian, still unaware of the ruse, pretends to act nice, talking about the books and how he hopes that the fire was going to be enough to dry off. And then, Bonzi, hearing the clattering, decided to act. The librarian also decides to ask the obvious question of Bonzi. So, since you're a clown, I'm sure you know plenty of jokes. Got any about books? Yeah, sure. What did one book say to the other? What? I was just checking to see if we were on the same page. Honk. Blam. Bonzi fired the revolver he was hiding under his coat, spreading the librarian's brains over the bookshelves directly behind him. This, of course, alerted the cultists to the sad clown below, and the ones behind the building decided to investigate, leaving the tied-up player beaten but alive. The cultist rounds the corner, pulling out his gun and trying to spot something in the library. He never saw Bonzi behind him with the law book. Ten hits over the head later, Bonzi wipes the blood off his face and examines his work. Guess I threw the book at you, honk. The other three cultists enter the room and send in two of their own to investigate, which were promptly disposed of by the sad clown lurking in the shadows with the gun and a collected works of Shakespeare. Not to be, I guess, honk. After freeing his allies and finding a map of the area, Bonzi turned to his group and stated flatly, I'll be in the car. Reading in the dark is bad for your eyes, honk. The campaign continued without much happening for a while, losing only one member in the span of a month of game time, which we thought spoke highly of our redeemed status. But I wouldn't stop yet. I wanted to ensure that our GM wasn't going to kill us in the middle of the night. Bonzi remained just as sad, and it served him well when they met with the second group of cultists. The location was an abandoned funeral home, Apparently, the cult was of an eldritch god who was most powerful when surrounded by the dead. No big surprise, seeing as everyone up to this point had connections with some dead family member from years ago. We pull the car around the back, and two sneak in the vent, and two, Bonzi, sneak in the back door. We knock out two guards and tie them up with a stretchy rubber chicken. Then we make our way deeper into the building. The first room that we find with a cult? The morgue. The cultist tosses a knife, landing in Bonzi's ally's shoulder. Bonzi pulls out a gun and fires off two into the cultist's chest, killing him and blowing their cover. Bonzi wastes no time in preparing his next plan. He pulls out the knife and stifles the wound, having been a performer he had dealt with knife wounds before, and told him to wait by the door with a gun while Bonzi waddled into the shadows to meet up with the rest of the group. He spotted a cultist in the hall, but managed to hide long enough to sneak behind him as the cultist passed. Bonzi raised the knife to his throat and quickly slit it before he could alert the others. Uh, guess that was a close shave. Honk. The others upstairs cleared the rest out and helped Bonzi lug the wounded character back to the car, but not before they saw another group of cultists preparing for something nasty in the wings of the funeral home. So Bonzi opts to investigate, with a friend of course. Bonzi was sad, not stupid. Investigating paid off, and Bonzi and the friend uncover the cultists attempting a ritual to summon their dead god. The character says that with a few minutes he can put a bomb together, but it looks like it'll take more time. So Bonzi volunteers. Imagine the cultist's surprise when this rather depressed looking clown waddles out from the shadows, holding a little flower and a deck of cards. It was time for the routine. What did the dead god say to the humorless cultist? Is it dead in here, or what? Honk. Who are you, clown? Please, call me Bonzi. Clown was my father. Honk. The cultists mutter a hushed debate about how to kill Bonzi, who was taking this time to turn the flower into a napkin, and then pulling it out of his sleeve. One cultist got closer, and Bonzi offered him a hand of cards. Pick a card. Any card. The cultist reaches for a card. No, not that one. 
The cultist stopped and reached for another. No, not that one either. Finally, the cultist grabs his card, studies it, and offers it to Bonzi. Hey, why are you giving it back? Because you're going to make it disappear. And waste a perfectly good playing card. Honk. The cultists finally run out of humor and pull out knives to sacrifice the sad clown before them to their dead god. Lucky for Bonzi, the friend finishes the bomb just in time, which he tosses to Bonzi. The clown lifts it up as the timer counts down. The cultists back up, waiting for a pun from the strange clown. What's the matter? No clever words this time. Uh, not really. Are you out of jokes? No, no. I just wanted to go out with a bang. Honk. After we hightailed it out of there, the group managed to save the player with the knife wound, and Bonzi survived with only minor injuries and a scar on his upper arm from a grazing bullet. Dozens of puns, sad clown routines, and close shaves later, we decoded the last clue from the books, and we had it. The final showdown spot where everything must come to an end. And I think somewhere we all knew that Bonzi was tired of being sad all the time. Bonzi was finally gonna have his peace. A graveyard, hundreds of years old and plenty creepy, was full of cultists that seemed armed to the teeth with daggers and strange magic. We had found a way to hoard the weapons from the police station and entered the fray like a four-man army right out of the Pulp Fiction books. We left nothing in our wake and cleverly averted disaster after disaster. Bonzi took a couple of hits, but he was already sad, so it wasn't like anyone noticed. When we reached the last inner circle of the cult, we took a small vote about who would take points, and the most dangerous position on our last mission. Bonzi didn't even finish listening, instead waddling out onto the dark grass and honking his nose with the deepest frown on his face. The cultists debate killing me, but the leader lets Bonzi draw closer. I think that it was out of curiosity rather than an ingenious plan, but whatever drove him allowed Bonzi to draw within punching distance. There were no words, no puns, only the cold stares of two men in the dark surrounded by ancient chanting and dark magic that warps the very flesh of any who touch it. Then Bonzi pulled out a long balloon, which I mimicked having practiced this for weeks in advance. You know what I hate most about being a clown? Bonzi asked after inflating the balloon. It's the assumption that I'm always gonna be happy and smiling and always ready with a joke. Everyone sees a clown and suddenly they can't be unhappy. At least, not really unhappy. How could someone with a lifetime of jokes and puns ever be sad? Shouldn't they be smiling and laughing and carrying around rubber chickens all the time? Bonzi shows the balloon to the cultist, revealing a puppy. I offer the real one to my GM. But we can be sad. In fact, I think we have to be sad. People want to be happy so much, they'll ignore everyone around them to keep their illusion of happiness. I accept that. After all, I'm Bonzi. My job is to be unhappy so everyone else can be happy and smile and laugh. That's what clowns do. We make people happy. Bonzi reaches into his sleeve and pulls out the only picture on his person, a little girl with a young, smiling Bonzi. I wanted Susie to be happy. Bonzi reveals a grenade in his other hand, just underneath the balloon animal. As the cultist pulls away, he realizes too late to notice that the grenade pin is attached to the bottom loop on the feet of the balloon puppy. As it clings, the cultist drops the balloon and shouts for everyone to back up. Bonzi smiles as the rest of the team clears out the inner circle, leaving the leader and Bonzi near the center. As he's about to leave, Bonzi grabs the man's wrist and slides on a trick cuff. The leader looks down at his wrist and then back up to Bonzi, who is honest to God smiling as the eldritch monster begins to manifest in the mortal world. Bonzi picks up the animal, holds it up, and grins gently as the eldritch god begins to take form. That's all, folks. Honk. The rest of the group looked for hours through the bloody mangled mess of the god and cultist for anything of Bonzi, but they found nothing. 
Were it not for Bonzi blowing up the heart of the monster as it arrived, the undead god would have fully formed and taken the world with plagues of undeath and decay. But now, it lay broken and would need to reform over eons in the cold reaches of space. The party did manage to find something of Bonzi. They found a lone, old photo of a smiling clown and a little girl. They took the photo and a few words on the back. The GM read them in a quiet voice. To Bonzi, thank you for always making her happy. Susie thanks you. They left the photo on a small grave marker in the town's newer graveyard, and they decided to leave town. Before they left, one produced a rubber nose from his pocket and tied it to the grave. And like that, they left Bonzi. Not the sad clown. The clown that was sad. So everyone else could be happy. End of story. And thus concludes the tale of Bonzi the Sad Clown. We like to meme on these weird characters being turned into legends by the internet, but you know, there's actually a grain of truth behind it. There's a huge amount of effort that goes into preserving and retelling stories like Bonzi, Oogie, and Old Man Henderson. Go watch my reading of Old Man Henderson, by the way. I like to think that my reading for sure is the definitive version of the tale. Don't at me. There have been a ton of content creators who have done their own tellings of these stories before I did, and I'm sure there will be plenty who will come after after me. And isn't that literally how legends would start back in the old days? I pray to God that one day the aliens who discover the ruins of our civilization scratch their heads in confusion on why a story about a sad clown who kills eldritch deities survived the ravages of time. If anyone asks me why I do what I do, that's gonna be my answer. To leave a digital footprint that will confuse the ever-loving hell out of whatever finds it after I'm gone. Also money. And the memes. Okay, mostly the memes. And on that happy note, I think that's a good place to wrap up. No Gallery of the Drake this week because I ran out. It's so freaking crazy to me how many people have sent in fan art, it's actually insane. If my memory serves me correctly, I think at this point it's literally over a hundred different pieces of fan art that have been submitted for me to make dumb skits out of. And I would be lying if I said I still didn't get a wild surge of happy chemicals every time I saw a new piece show up in my inbox. I've always wanted to brand my community as a place for artists of all kinds to gather, and the fact that there's been so much art submitted shows me that I have definitely succeeded. If you want to have your fan art featured on the channel, be sure to send it to the email in my about section. I mean it when I say that it is definitely my favorite part of doing this job. Now with the story over, I think that's a good place to wrap up for real this time. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and send in your fan art! And if you feel like supporting the channel further, my Patreon and merchandise links are in the description. I would like to thank you all for listening, and I hope to see you next time in the Den of the Drake.